Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyana Muhammad wa ala alayhi wa sahbihi wa sallam amma bada habita fillah imam muslim in his sahih or in the mukhtasar of the sahih muslim the summarized version of sahih muslim by al-hafid zakiyadeen Abdul Azim Al Mundari, Rahmatullahi Rahmatul Wasiya. He mentioned a title chapter which refers to oppression and how we should beware of oppressing people in the various ways that we can oppress. And this is a warning for all of humanity, but especially the believers, whether they be in positions of power, whether they be those people who are. Uh, the lay persons, whether they be people of Dawa, whether they be people of, of scholarship, whatever the case may be, all of us have to abide by justice. And he entitled this chapter, Justice on the Day of Resurrection, meaning that those people who are oppressed in this life, they will receive justice in the hereafter with Eliza or Job. And those people who oppress in this life will receive justice in the hereafter. And the justice will be that they will have to pay back and they will have a loss of their good deeds and it will be given to those who they oppress. <laughs> Abu Hurairah narrated that the Messenger of Allah وسلم, said, do you know who is the bankrupt? The companions of the Prophet وسلم, said, a bankrupt amongst us is the one who is neither dirham with him nor wealth. The Prophet وسلم, said, the bankrupt of my ummah is the one who comes on the day of resurrection with prayers and fasts and zakat but he finds himself bankrupt on that day as he had exhausted his cash of virtues, meaning good deeds, since he abused others. He brought calamity against others and he unlawfully consumed the wealth of others and he shed the blood of others and he beat others and his virtues will be credited to the account of the ones who suffered at his hand. And if his goods fall short to clear the account, then their sins will be entered onto his account and he will be thrown into the fire. This is in Sahih Muslim. Ahabatifillah, what we learn from this hadith of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam are we, we learn immense benefits. And from some of the benefits, some of the lessons that we learn from this hadith of our beloved Prophet Muhammad ibn Abdullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is that the tahreem of oppression. That's, it's impermissible to oppress. And here the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was addressing who? The Muslimin. And here the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam referred to people who did what? They prayed. So they could have been in the front row. They fast. They fast their Ramadan. Maybe they even fast extra. Sit them in Shawal and other, other times. And they pay their zakat. So these are people who have good deeds and do the acts of ibadah. What about the people who are fall completely short in their ibadah? They're more inclined, inclined toward oppressing. But unfortunately, many of us know countless situations of even, even I've had people mention to me in bookstores about people who were younger scholars who were illustrated greed about the, the, the getting their books uh, published. And this is a characteristic unbefitting for the one who's calling to the book in the sunnah, especially uh, a person who's known as, for scholarship. What about those people who are in the front row? 
sometimes landlords, who oppress their tenants, or all the various scenarios in which people oppress, and they have worship. The Prophet ﷺ was warning against those ones. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And he mentioned that they'll find themselves bankrupt on the on Yom Qiyamah, meaning bankrupt with their good deeds. They were doing, they were fasting, they were doing all the regular acts of ibadah and, and, and other acts of ibadah. But they were oppressing people. And in the hadith, one of the first things the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, وَيَتْ, uh, he said, قَدْ شَتَمَ هَذَا وَقَذَفَ هَذَا He said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that like they slandered, he, they, this one slandered this one, you know, or brought fitna and calamity for this one. And abuse this one. So that lets us know by abusing and being a source of fitna for people, of discord, causing fitna in the in the community, cursing people, using foul language against Muslims, even if they're from Ahlul Bidah. There's a there's a, a a scale to observe, a scale of justice. It's not permissible to lie and exaggerate the truth. Even about Ahl Bida or ah, 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 Ahl Kufr or Shirk, because this can result in oppression. You may have had a either a good intent or a foul intention even in warning against a particular individual, but you tajawuz, you went beyond the bounds. You began talking about his family. You began causing doubt way beyond, you know, even making tech fear of him without the right to do so, without the conditions, without the without the knowledge, without the prerequisite knowledge to do so, and the criterion, and the moana, the things that prohibit tech fear. That's from oppression. And unlawfully consume the wealth of others. So it lets us know that we can't obviously steal from others or cheat others or consume the wealth of those people who take advantage of people. And greater than that is shedding the blood of others and beating and torturing others. So this is a warning that all of that warrants, it warrants, warrants punishment in the hereafter. And it will eat away at your good deeds. So it's imperative, a habit of Allah, that the Muslim is always conscious of his or her conduct and character and how they deal with others. Because all of us fall short. The Prophet said, All the children of Adam, they sin. And the best of those who sin are those who repent. So repentance is open for all of us. But be conscious of how you speak, how you deal with others. And it goes without saying about killing and torturing others. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil.